I gotta say, I'm a little jealous. You know I do all my own stunts, right? You know that about me, but but why? It's not because I've got like a death wish. People say that all the time. It's not because I'm an adrenaline junkie. I answer that question all the time. It's not because that. Because, I mean, when I do my own stunts, I'm scared. I mean, really. No, I do it. I do these stunts because I want people to look up on that screen and know that there is a human being up there risking their life for the movie that they're watching. And if my name is on that poster, I want it to be my life. And when some kid looks up at that screen, I want them to see themselves. They can't really see that in these so-called superheroes. God, our world is so different than when I was a kid, than when we were kids. I feel like back then it was just like Captain Lightwave and some other, you know, heroes. But now they're, they're everywhere. And, and the youth of today think that it's possible to become super. Kids looking around for some chemical accident or scientific experiment gone awry to turn them into something special. It's like a poor person putting their hope in lottery tickets. I don't want to push anything on you, but that's, you know, that's what biologenesis is rallying against. We want to teach human beings that they don't, they don't need superpowers to be special. We don't need to look for miracles to save us. No more miracles. That's why I named the, the, this movie that, you know, no more miracles. Jesus, I'm so, I'm so lost in it now. I, I was, I was telling you, Oh yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. That's right. I was just saying how jealous I am of you <laughs> because of, uh, of this movie star stuff. I mean, it can be a lot of phony nonsense. Everyone's just posing and flexing their money for their ego, but you, you, you made your career being real. Do you know what I mean? I mean, you were putting it on the line with your loops, risking your life with these stunts and the way you, you run around. I mean, the kids are with you. The kids feel you. I mean, I knew I had to have you on this film, but when they asked me to speak at Malconian High School for this football game, on the anniversary of Polymorph's death, I knew I needed backup. I need a real one. And I'm so glad. I'm so thrilled. Really thrilled. Really thrilled that you're standing here with me. You can help me show the world that we don't need interdimensional aliens or cybernetic supermax we don't need some higher power to miraculously rescue us from our problems we are the higher power wow <laughs> thanks I'm, i mean i'm really really glad to be here and i really appreciate you inviting me i think this is going to be great and you know, I, I hear you. I, I, I It's funny. I've always kind of taken a different look at it. It's not that we're not super and not meant to be super. It's that we all can be super. The two people speaking right now is Nick Northcutt. He is an action movie star. He's got a very tight, tight shirt on it's a uh, slate blue short sleeve and he's got jeans with a little rip placed at the knees strategically placed at the knees and some large brown boots he is standing with a woman gail would you like to describe gracie hartwell gracie is average height almost 30 um young woman she has straight black hair and pretty much black eyes but it's right now up in a ponytail with a baseball cap this it's a hot pink baseball cap that says stunt starlet on the top uh, in uh bright lime green writing she's wearing her signature lime green biker jacket with some black biker shorts and a black t-shirt under it, which has a, a picture of a snake with a pink bow around its head. And then she has bright orange sneakers on. And Gracie Hartwell and Nick Northcutt are standing on a football field. This football field belongs to Malconia and High, a high school in Solis Bay, technically in the Beretta Hills neighborhood. 
and they are watching as a crew is assembling a stage at the center of this high school. And a ramp is being set up, kind of like a Hot Wheels track, so that a motorcycle doesn't mess up the field before the big game, because tonight a football game will be played. But before it is played, Gracie Hartwell and Nick Northcutt are going to give a speech to the students of Malconian High. Gracie, I was thinking about maybe having... we. I was talking to the the principal and we were thinking about having, and, and this is if you think it's safe, we'd like to have the cheer squad at the center and just to, below the stage. So you wouldn't be jumping over, over them, but maybe we could get the kids involved. I think that would be, that would really put this over the top, seeing, you know, the students seeing their own out here. Yeah. I, I definitely don't want them in the middle as much as I can train and get everything right it just takes somebody flicking a stone in the wrong place and I would not want to put any of those cheerleaders in danger but yeah let's have them um, form a pyramid or whatever they want to do on the stage I think that's great we can move them down stage as far as we need to in order to make this safe for (laughs) you and for them Yes, Uh, because we also have pyrotechnics going off and I don't want to anything Uh, in fact I need to go and I'm doing a run through with the uh, the props guy and the pyro guy. Oh, yeah. And he points over the stage, and you can see that there is a flat stage. It's maybe a f- two feet tall. It's modular. It's like four panels put together. Uh, it's not going to be a huge jump for you, but it's a huge amount of crew because they are meant to assemble this and deassemble this as quickly as possible so that kids can can play football in a matter of moments and, and within an hour after the speech. And around the stage, you see these large rectangular boxes. There are four of them set up at the corners of the stage, and each one has a payload for a firework display. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of crew around. And behind you, there are a lot of students in between classes because this is Friday. And we're getting close to the end of the school day, but there are some students who took the last period off to see if they could catch a glimpse of Nick Northcutt and the uh, hometown hero that is Gracie Hartwell, um, stunt starlet supreme. In fact, you turn around as Nick Northcutt walks off and a couple girls, a couple young ladies walk up towards you and one of them is wearing a cheerleader outfit right now and she says um Gracie Hartwell? Yeah. Hi I'm Stacy Larson captain of the cheer squad. Nice to meet you. We were hoping that you would be interested in doing a little video for us and she holds up her phone. We just wanted you to say like Malconian High Stompers go Malconian High Stompers something like that I don't know uh, Oh, okay, yeah, definitely. Would that be cool? Is that all right? Yeah, you're getting in here with me, right? Oh, my God. Of course I am. Absolutely. Let's go. Sweet. Hold this, Jasmine. (laughs) And she hands the phone. Oh, no, 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 Jasmine, come on, come on. We can hold hold this. Come on, ladies. Let's do this. Fine. Jasmine, I guess you're in here with us. And Jasmine is holding Stacy's phone awkwardly because she's like, well, why doesn't Stacy hold her own phone? <laughs> um, now that we're both in it, I don't need to hold it. But Jasmine will absolutely fucking hold that phone uh, <laughs> because Stacy said, hold the phone. And they hold up the phone for you guys. Is it recording? Okay, ready? Okay, go. Hey, everybody, hey. this is Stacy. <laughs> she like totally steps over <laughs> you. Hey, everybody, this is Stacy, and we're here... <laughs> With Gracie Hartwell, Gracie Hartwell, do you have a Gracie Hartwell? Do you have a message for Malconian High? Go Malconian High Stompers! Yay! And they hold up their pom poms, and you hear that one, two, and their smile is so big you can feel the pain in their own faces as they are stretching their mouths <laughs> as wide as possible. Okay, Jasmine, cut it. Gracie, that was so cool. That was so nice. Thank you. You're so sweet. Absolutely. I couldn't help but notice that Nick was saying that we were going to be working together today. And I just want you to know that we are a team of utmost professionals. 
I run a very tight ship. All right. The key is to keep everybody as downstage as far as possible. I don't want any accidents, okay? Absolutely. Everybody that is very accident prone will be downstage as much as possible. Jasmine, take note so that we know where to place Zach Lapidus. Cut to history class. The advances in space travel have been incredible. And now we're starting to actually send men and women into the outer reaches of space. And there's no telling what they'll find. Maybe they'll discover a planet just like this one. Or or maybe they'll even discover intelligent life that can teach us more about the universe we live in. All I know is I'm very excited for the future. Well, that's it for today. Oh, wait, wait, don't, 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 don't get up. I still need to pass back those tests for Monday. And Professor Conrad starts to hand out history tests to the classroom. Before you leave, I know everyone is fired up about tonight's game, but do not forget there is an equally incredible occult exhibit opening at the Herbert Museum of History. They have some pretty incredible rare finds, including the Horn of Diocles and an ancient grimoire said to belong to a real group of warlocks from the 16th century. So if you're wanting to get your spooky on before October, like me, definitely check it out. Yes, I'll be offering extra credit if you bring back a ticket and program from the event. And based on some of these scores, some of you might need it, he says, as he hands a paper back to Zach Lapidus. David. Could you describe Zach for us? Zach's a pretty athletic guy, but he's not one of those people that necessarily stands out. He's not like uh, super bulky or anything, but he he's on the cheer, cheer, cheer squad himself. So he is used to hoisting people uh, far above his head and everything. He's got uh, like kind of sandy, curly, like blonde hair and hazel eyes. And it is a bit awkward, but, you know, seems to have have a little group of friends that he, uh, you know, cracks jokes with. Zach, I expect a lot better from you in the future, okay? Ah, sorry, I, I just, I don't seem to have as much time as I want anymore. Well, you're becoming a man, and that means a lot more increase in responsibilities. But make sure you focus on the most important responsibilities, which is learning. Okay, Professor Conrad, I'll, <laughs> I'll try and study some more. All right, everybody, enjoy the weekend. And the class collectively gets up and starts filing out. This is the last class of the day, and Zach is about to have to make his way towards the gymnasium where he's going to be practicing with the cheer squad. He's been told that he's going to be a part of this event tonight on the one-year anniversary of Polymorph's death. Polymorph being this renowned superhero to the citizens of Solus Bay, one that died at a football game, saving the life of Zach Lapidus and resulting in what hopefully we will soon discover over the course of this series, his incredible powers. David, Zach starts making his way down the hall towards the locker room to start getting changed into his gear. Is there anybody that Zach would speak to at the end of the school day that he would look forward to speaking to? Perhaps checking his phone to text his mom or a best friend? Yeah, I, I think I think he'd be kind of anxious to talk to uh, Mrs. Callaway. He's, that's the only person that knows what happened to him a year ago. And... This has been a really tough day because it's kind of the history of this traumatic life change for him. Yeah. So you're hurriedly making your way to the locker room so you can get changed and get to Miss Calloway so you can speak to her. Miss Calloway being the only witness who saw Zach die and reborn. As you're making your way to the locker room, you go to open the door. It's one of those push doors and the door slings open. And you see Jackson Jones, star football player, wide receiver for the Malconian High Stompers. 
you see him come out and he is sweating, looks ill. And tonight would be a really big game for him tonight. It's senior year for him. And he shoulders into you and he just puts his hand up and he says, ah, guy, out of the way. And he looks like he's about to be sick. And he starts rushing down the hall. Whoa, Jackson, you okay? And he shrugs his shoulder. He's like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And he starts, he, he tries, he's, he's not waiting around to have this conversation with you. Man. Yeah. You make your way into the, uh, the bathroom, the, the changing room, locker room. You make your way into the locker room, I think is the term I want to use. <laughs> you make your way into the locker room. And you can see, you know, some bathroom stalls are open and it's pretty empty in here. Nobody's, most people are heading out to the football field to watch what's happening. Um, so you have the whole locker room to yourself for this brief moment. I'm going to kind of sit down on the bench kind of in front of it. And my hands are kind of just shaking just because I just have like so much anxiety today. I even kind of considered not going to school, even though it was a big day of just like, just one of those days where I didn't know if I could kind of handle the pressure of what today was. So I just kind of try and take a few deep, deep breaths and get changed into my cheerleading uniform. You take a few deep breaths. And as you get up to change into your cheerleading uniform, your foot kicks something. You hear something spin around the ground. It sounds like glass and it spins around and hits one of the lockers and then rolls around a little bit on the tiled floor. Can I see what I kicked? Yeah, it's maybe five feet away from you. Thankfully, you didn't kick it too hard. It, it just kind of spun out, but it's made of glass. You bend over, you check it out, and it's a black vial, like black glass, and it has something laser etched into the glass. It looks like a like a sun with the, like triangular rays coming off of it. And then it... It looks like it has sunglasses, like it has those little loops. Yeah, yeah. And a uh, instead of a smile, it has like an O face. Like a, <laughs> its mouth is in the shape of an O, like a dot. Is this, and this is the same locker room that Jackson Jones would have just changed from, right? Yeah, he just came out. How close would this be to his locker? Pretty close. Yeah. Have, and I've never seen anything like this before, I assume. Yeah. Yeah, you have. You've seen this symbol before from your crime fighting okay there's a gang of a highly intense criminal organization that has this symbol and it belongs to somebody whose name you've heard before mr bliss and you, when you turn the vial to the side you realize the sunglasses are actually a b oh this kind of rattles zach because the the villain mishap that that killed polymorph in front of him mentioned mr bliss before he left and said, yeah. Mr. Bliss is going to love this after he uh, killed Polly. So Mr. Bliss is someone I've been really interested in tracking down. So I'm definitely going to pocket this vial and investigate it later. Okay. Pocket the vial. You get dressed into your cheer outfit, which is school colors or what did we decide they were? Like emerald green, green and purple? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> like a grape. Like a big old like grape. A grape. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. So uh, I love this idea for this school. <laughs> stompers. <laughs> Such a ridiculous, so there, the stompers. There's the wine stomp. I get it now. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, okay, we'll get to, we'll, there's some more visual gags later that we'll get into. <laughs> um, but we're not going to we're not going to tease them all. We're going to that's yeah. a tease for later. We'll uh -huh. we're not going to spoil gonna, it all. We're going to save it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You pocket this vial. Get changed into your cheer outfit. It, it has a little C on it for captain. Do cheerleaders do that? Do they do it like football players and hockey players with a little C? Yeah, for sure. Sure. Has a little C for captain. Even though Stacy Larson said that she was the captain. She is co-captain. Co-captain. <laughs> and you find yourself passing Miss Calloway's office. And she is on the phone uh, alone. And her office is just a little ways from the gym where you can see the other kids are gossiping. They're all gathered around Stacy Larson, who seems to be playing like a video on her phone. Would you go meet up with the kids? Or do you want to stop and talk to Miss Calloway real quick? I'll stop and kind of give like a little like little soft knock on her door just to see if she raises her hand, gives a thumbs up. I'll walk in and 
close the door behind me. She holds her finger up to tell you to wait. All right, look, I got to go. No, I'm busy. Yeah, I have a student here who needs to talk to me. It's real important. Okay. All right. I said, okay. I said it was all right. And she hangs up. Big week tonight. Big, big, uh, big show coming up. Yeah. How are you feeling? You look a little uh, nervous. Honestly, I'm just looking forward to the day being over. <sighs> it's just hard because, like, everyone's out here celebrating and kind of going along with it. But, like, today isn't a day to be happy. Today, <laughs> I just don't know why we're celebrating Nick fucking Northcutt when, like, Polymorph died here a year ago. It's a bit of a stretch, but Nick has uh, come back to Solace Bay to... To shoot his new movie, from what I understand, and he wanted to show you guys some some support, some love for tonight. I mean, I I haven't met the man yet. I'm about to, and we're all about to here in a few minutes, kiddo. But uh, I guess he's trying to be nice. I don't know. I don't know, but isn't he? He's like he's like anti-hero almost, right? Isn't it kind of weird to have him here on a day when we're I don't know should be remembering a hero? Uh, I mean, you make some good points. you know, I, I I don't know. He, I think he's just trying to rally the human spirit, and he's really good at talking about that kind of stuff. And yeah, hopefully he'll do it tastefully and not bring up you know superheroes not being worth uh, idolizing. Because I know a superhero, and uh, I think he's a pretty good kid. Thanks. Hey, uh, I found this vial in the locker room. It has it has a uh, Mister Bliss's symbol on it, and I mean, you said. You said after Mishap, you know, blew us up that like right, right before he left, he said, Mr. Bliss is going to love this. And and today of all days, I find something of his in 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 the locker room. Well, geez, that is pretty concerning. Um, but I mean, Mishap's in prison. There's... Yeah, Mr. Bliss isn't, though. Well, I guess not. But what do you want to come to a high school for? Yeah, it just... I don't know what kind of stuff Mr. Bliss sells, but it's kind of weird that it's in a high school. It just, it doesn't make me comfortable. Like what if someone tries something today? Well, do you know what it is? What's in the, is it empty? What is, what is this? Uh, It's just like an empty, it's an empty black vial with like a criminal symbol on it. Like that's kind of concerning. (laughs) Kind of. Yeah, I guess you're right. (laughs) I think it's uh, ultra concerning. Uh, to me, as a teacher, uh, we're, you just found this in the uh, in the locker room. Yeah, no, I, I found it like at, just on the ground of the locker room. I don't know if it's connected, but like Jackson Jones just left, and he looked awful. He looked really ill. Oh, he might have nerves. I mean, tonight's a big night. There's going to be cameras here for Nick Northcutt. Yeah. And he has a chance to maybe score some scholarships. I'm sure he's just. I guess it's just. Being a hero kind of makes you a bit paranoid. I don't know. It just feels like this year stuff always goes wrong. And I just feel this pressure to try and make it right. And I just don't want today today to go wrong. That's all. Well, then let's focus on what we can take care of. Yeah. We can cheer our asses off tonight. Pardon my French. Let's do it. Yeah. And we're going to have a big show. Yeah. No, I okay. just need to focus on what I can control. You're exactly you're totally right. Yeah. And you go out there and cheer your butts <sighs> off, okay? All right. Thanks. Gracie Hartwell, you're walking down these high school hallways. That <laughs> It's probably been uh, 10 years, uh, 12 years or so since you've been in high school. Hmm. And you're seeing kids all lined up at their lockers with phones, like filming you and Nick walking down the hall. And he's waving and signing uh, people's photographs and jackets, a lot of letterman jackets. He's signing the sleeves and shoulder area. Um, some girls just like, looks like she's about to pull down like her top a little (laughs) bit to sign her chest. (laughs) And he like, he's seen this before. He's like, don't do that. Don't do that. I will sign whatever else, uh, than that. And, uh, she pulls out of her blouse a, a photograph that she had rolled up. She's like, sorry, I was getting, you know, I was getting this. What do you think I was going to do? He's like, I, that, nothing. And he signs the picture, hands it back. 
And he's like, we need to get, we need to go guys out. I'll, I'll see you all after the game and I'll be around town filming the movie. No more miracles coming next summer. Really glad to meet you guys. Go stompers. And you all make your way into the gym where you see students gathered around Stacy Larson, who you met earlier. And you see the coach of the cheer squad, Miss Calloway. She's coming in with a young man who looks like he's putting on a bit of a brave face. All right, guys. Nick Northcutt comes in. All right, guys. We've got a big plan here tonight. Uh, Gracie is going to be doing a jump. You guys are going to be forming a pyramid. We were hoping somebody could do... She's going to be jumping over me, and you guys are going to be placed about 20 yards down. Everybody's going to be really safe. We have crew who are going to work you through this. But we were hoping somebody could do something... I don't know. Does anybody have like a great skill, like a jump or a twist or something you can do in the air? Somebody like a vaulting something? Does anybody have anything like that? You want someone to jump off the top of the pyramid? Oh, I mean, it doesn't have a, be a pyramid. Yeah. Do, what, do, what else do you guys do? Like, do, is it just pyramids or do you, can you, <laughs> I, I, I saw, I saw some movies once about cheerleaders and they were doing all kinds of wild shit. Sorry. I am so sorry, Miss Callie. Hey, you watch your language. I apologize. Uh, they do a whole bunch of wild stuff in those movies. You guys have like, uh, like gymnastic stuff, corkscrews. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we, we can do some flips. We can do some corkscrews. Who are you? Uh, I'm Zach. Hey Zach. I see by the sea on your chest, you must be the captain and Stacy immediately shoulders into you. (laughs) Co-captain. He's co-captain with me, Stacy Larson. That's right. Co-captain. You were saying, Zach. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're certainly used to doing a, a. We've actually been practicing how to spell Nick with, you know, hoisting up girls to actually spell Nick. Nick. Yeah, it's my name. Exactly. I, I'll ho- hoist Stacy up. She'll put her leg up. We'll form a K. You know, everyone can form their own letters. Yeah. Can you guys show me just to make sure it works? For sure. Yeah. We've been practicing all week. All right, David. Yeah. It is time to make <laughs> a cheer the first the first <laughs> test of the game the first dice roll of the season hey what's up everybody <laughs> here we are <laughs> uh, hey what's going on everybody it's jay uh yeah. we're playing icons rpg where everybody's gonna make tests we're basically just rolling d6s and uh, I roll a d6 to counteract his effort, and he applies it to his stat, and I apply mine to the difficulty rating, and we determine levels of success. If that doesn't make sense, I guarantee you I will be explaining it again in the near future. But until then, David, if you could roll d6, add that to your coordination skill, and I will roll a d6 and add it to Stacy's coordination skill. As she tries to clearly fuck you up so that you're not a part oh, of this. Oh, dagnabbit. Well, you know, I one of my qualities is as a cheerleader, so I feel like I would get like a little bonus. Yeah. Right? Do you, ha- do you have like any type of specialty related to cheerleading, like acrobatics or anything like that? I have athletics. You can do your athletics. That's, that's okay. fine. All right, so, all right. so, however, we'll so you can add that to your score. Okay. So you have a coordination of, could you say it for the audience? Coord- I have a coordination of six. I'll roll a D six and then I get a plus one for athletic. All right. So I rolled a five plus six plus one, 12. All right. And Stacy has a coordination of four. She's just a normal human being. And she rolled a, she has an athletics of one. So it's five plus my D six is a two. That is seven, seven from what was your total score? 12, 12. You majorly succeed at what you're trying to do. Uh, And when she kind of like tries to step on your nuts as you're hoisting her up, like her foot slips, right? Like you're doing the alley-oop, you put your hands down and her toe like comes in hard at your groin area and you like gut it and toss her up and then catch her again to form this, uh, the K and Nick. (laughs) I guess I took cheerleading for three years in high school. So I know all these moves. <laughs> right, um, right. I did. Liar. Uh, yeah. Yep. 
uh, you do that. And then when she drops to the ground, what do you want to do when she drops to the ground? You could do like a, like a backflip or something like a somersault just to be like in your face, Stacy Larson. Because it was a massive success. Because it was a, because okay. it was a, it was a massive <laughs> success. <laughs> After I land, I'll kind of do like a little, like kind of like a side flip, kind of like one of those. Whew, like a barrel roll in the air? Yeah, like a little barrel roll. <laughs> and then after it's done, I'll uh I'll kinda like give her a little bit of a a shoulder check outside of like the point of it like being part of the move, but just light enough to be like, I know what you just tried to do. Ah uh, yeah. I love this. This is the game, by the way, guys. We're playing a superhero game between two cheerleaders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, it's going really well so far. Nick, like, applause. He's like, guys, this looks great. Zach, right? Yeah. Zach, I get a lot of people talking to me today. You're going to be my point man for the cheerleaders. Is that okay? For the cheer squad? If I need anything, I need you guys send Zach, and I will speak to you, and you convey that to the rest of the, the cheer squad tonight. Is that okay? Just to keep the line of communication very clear. For sure. I'm, I'm happy to be the captain on this one. Awesome. Great. A uh, good flipping around um, rest of you. And Gracie, <laughs> what did what did you think of the performance? I thought it was great. I'm also not impressed. <laughs> but I'm just trying to really grin. <laughs> <laughs> She's not impressed with it at all. It was a massive success. I mean, this is... It was uh, No, I mean, like... Pretty I, good for I'm, I'm with Nick. I'm like, oh, that dude can do some stuff. Okay. Um, the one guy is good. <laughs> the one guy's good. I'm kind of with Nick with like, oh yeah, and the rest of you. Um, and like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm just kind of like, yeah, cheer squad, got it. Oh, you kind of big time in them a little bit? No, not, at, not at all. I am grinning at all of them, but inside okay. I am. Dying. Anywhere else, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? It is Friday night, and the Malconian Stompers are going to be playing the Ardenville Yellow Knights. The Yellow Knights in their section are kind of put off to the side, so they're not crowding the field. The principal comes out. The sun's setting. It's beautiful, beautiful haze over the field. principal comes out. Ladies and gentlemen, last year, I don't think I need to remind anybody because we've been thinking about it all week, we lost a great hero in Polymorph at this very field. And tonight we kick off our football season in honor of his sacrifice and in honor of our spirit for surviving, persevering, thriving. And it just so happens that we have some very special guests who came here to say hi to everyone and show you their love and their support. And I'm going to turn things over to action movie star Nick Northcutt. And Nick Northcutt walks onto stage. There's like a curtain behind that's got like his po like a poster of him with an explosion. Uh, like he's getting exploded out of a building. So there's like broken glass everywhere. But his face is like stoic in the middle of this explosion. <laughs> like it's gonna be all right. <laughs> and he, he comes up and he's he's waving as he's walking up. Gracie, you are gearing up around the rampway, preparing yourself to do this jump, correct? Yep, yeah, I'm gearing up. And Zach, you're with the cheer squad. You're doing a couple of couple of uh, rah-rahs, shaking the pom-poms and all that jazz, saving the good stuff for the jump. You can hear the speakers and everything as he's making his way to the stage, the crowd. I mean, there's way more people here than there are seats. And there's video cameras set up, um, news crews on the track. So there's like that, the track around the the football field, the clay track for for uh, long distance runners, sprinters, and all that stuff. And uh, they're they're all standing along there, set up with their equipment. You see the football team sitting on the bench. Some of them are standing. One person sitting. The one person who's sitting is Jackson Jones, who is clutching his stomach. Nick Northcutt gets up to the stage. He's waving, smiling. People are chanting his name, Nick, Nick, Nick. He says, 
Okay, okay, okay. Tonight's not about me. Tonight it is about Malconian High. And the place goes bananas. <laughs> and when he says this is about Malconian High, and the crowd goes nuts, he looks around the field. He looks over at Gracie, who's 60, 70 yards away. Gives a little wink and a smile. And he goes, I just wanted to say what an honor it is to be invited here to speak to you all. And when he finishes that sentence, there is an explosion behind him as a mechanical creature with several arms painted purple and green erupts from the stage. It has blasters in two of its hands and a visor that is scanning Nick Northcutt. Target acquired. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Jay, and I hope you're enjoying the show so far. You might be wondering to yourself, hey, how can you show your appreciation for the work that we're doing here at Out of Depth? Let me tell you, friend, one way you can help us out is to just recommend the show to friends, strangers. Our goal is to get our stories out to as many ears as we can, so word of mouth is huge for us. Recommending the show to your friends or leaving a review at whatever site you're listening to us at, that goes a long way to helping us find and build our audience. But Jay, you may say, I've got a little coin in my pocket. I'd like to throw it your way. How do I get it? It from my pocket to your pocket. Well, you can go to patreon.com slash get out of depth and subscribe at any tier you feel comfortable for as long as you would like to. Patrons get access to some other behind the scenes info on the show, such as character questionnaires and my maps. They also get first access to our raw recording videos for each episode and exclusive access to our post season Q and A where we discuss the story and answer questions from subscribers. So if you want that kind of access to us, you're only going to get that at patreon.com slash get out of depth. That money helps us pay for artists and collaborators and expand our ability to create fun stories for you to enjoy. We don't do ads or paid endorsements for games, which means support from listeners just like you is absolutely vital to our growth. If you want to be a part of that, you can do it at patreon.com slash get out of depth thank you so much we shit and with that out of the way let's get back to the show and see who our heroes will save today let's go take care of this thing <laughs> sunbeams assemble sunbeams <laughs> assemble <laughs> we're not together not we're yet, not anyway. together yet yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. This creature explodes from the stage and immediately fires two shots at Nick Northcutt. And you see one graze his shoulder and he hits the ground, holding his chest. Who has the highest coordination? That would be me, Gracie Harwell, aka Labyrinth. You're on your motorcycle with your lime green jacket. You are 60, 70 yards away, mm -hmm. but you're on a motorcycle. All right. What would you like to do? Uh, I am going to rev up my engine and go towards the stage. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Mm. You just start taking off down the, down the track and people are screaming. Yeah. How big is this creature? You, this robot? You said, yeah. You said it was big, but how big? It's about seven, seven and a half oh, feet okay. tall. Okay. For some reason, I was picturing like 20. <laughs> so this is more doable. All right. Yeah. 20? What? I don't know. You said big. I went way big. Just picture the Iron Giant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is. David, what were you picturing? Uh, I, I, I might have been picturing, you know, 20? 8 to 10. No, I was 8 to 10, <laughs> I'd say. Yeah. We yeah. expect... Okay. No, hey, 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 we haven't played in a couple months. You. No, no. <laughs> Your robot's only seven feet. It got easier for gotcha. both of us, just it's a fine. lot easier. Yeah. Yep. 
We okay. haven't we haven't played in a couple months. We're getting <laughs> Yeah. We're feeling it back out. It's been you, a minute. You didn't let us know how many minivans it was. It, it was yes. just unclear. <laughs> it, burst back it is up like to one other. it is like one minivan standing straight up. Oh, okay. That's, that's helpful. Okay. Yeah. That's helpful. Yeah. That's yeah. the um, ideal form of measurement. But it's not <laughs> but it's much skinnier than a minivan. <laughs> Got it. Okay. But it has arms unlike a minivan, it, right? It, it's actually nothing like a minivan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that makes all of this other harder. Than, Can we start other, over? other than length. <laughs> other than length. Height. Got it. I don't know. Yeah. Now, this is all okay. useful information. I'm writing this all down. Uh, yeah. I hope those of you listening now picture this better than how I described it the first time before the break. All right. You're driving down. Uh, it's going to take a panel. For okay. you to get down there. Okay. Because it is quite far. And for those of you listening, you may be going, what is he, what, what did he just say? A panel? Panel in Icons RPG is what we use for the term turn. So on her turn, aka her panel, she is using her movement and then some to get her ass down the field racing towards this robot. That's okay. Lazarus, who is currently just... Regular old Zach in a cheerleading outfit. You are 30 yards away. It is uh, behind you. You're seeing this this fight. It just shot two lasers. Is uh, Nick Northcott, is he like unconscious or is he like, is he just like He's that? writhing around. There's a lot of people around here. There's a oh, lot of people around. We're making a difficult episode one. Yeah. Yeah. So the closest place to like be alone like like in terms of like getting behind the bleachers or like is diving underneath the stage like is there any place where i could be concealed close by and transform it's a good question i would say you probably wouldn't want to go towards the stage because that's where it just exploded out from under under right now yeah. so it might be a little sus if you run towards the stage no you'd have to go all the way back like in the in the stands there's a tunnel where the football team yeah, and you know, enters the field. You know, they do the paper, run through the um, the paper and break it, and get real fired up. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Is that the what paper, football does? Yeah, the paper break it area. Yeah, That's you know the paper breaking known. thing that they do in football. <laughs> yeah. You know what the fuck I'm talking about? Don't act like I know. I thing, know exactly right? what you're talking That's, about. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's it's kind discuss. of laughable that the first thing they do is break paper because I'm like, you're about to smash your face into yeah. another person's face with with a helmet. But then it's also great when you have those teams that like just run into the paper and bounce back. You know, mm-hmm. there's there's bloopers of that all around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're I'm betting against that team. So ten yeah. times so, out of ten. <laughs> yeah. So there there is no close place where I could be alone and transform. No, there's not. But this thing is clearly going for Nick Northcutt specifically. Yeah, and in fact, the rest of your cheerleading friends, they're all running towards the stands. They're running off the field. They're yep. getting the fuck out of here. Uh, I'm going to run towards Nick Northcutt. And if he's still like on the ground, just like incapacitated, I'm going to like pick him up and start trying to run away. All right. You run up to Nick Northcutt. You're the only cheerleader that's running towards the trouble. I love it because all the cameras are on you. And you run up to the stage and you see Nick Northcutt and you see like the singe on his shoulder. And it looks really red and tender. You can see the flesh underneath is really red and tender where this this uh, his shirt's been lasered, fried. And he uh, grabs a hold of your your shirt as you uh, as you come close. And he goes, save yourself. Get away from here. And he goes to push you away. I, I'm going to try and just like, if he's still writhing, I'm just going to try and like, fireman carry him but i am gonna say why exactly is there a robot after you (laughs) it's a good question kid yeah (laughs) it is his turn he is going to dismount himself from your fireman's carry says we have to stop it (laughs) no one's getting hurt here today (laughs) how are you gonna stop a robot i know the pyro guy and he <laughs> runs over to one of the large rectangular boxes and tips it over onto its side and is angling it toward, 
towards this robot creature, this mech. And he says, now, Larry, fire it now. And Larry's freaking out right now. Gracie, you're about to hit this ramp. How fast does your bike go? I mean, it goes 100, but I don't know that I'm going 100. What do you know? Uh, so... Is, is it between the ramps or is it where? Sorry, I yeah, thought I was just going straight stage. to it. It's on it's the on stage. It's on the stage, yeah. Okay. The ramps are on either side of the stage and you're about to hit one ramp. Okay. And yeah, fly I'm not. Over I'm actually thing. not going that fast. I'm going as fast as I need to to let the bike drop and not make the leap. So you're just going to drop onto the stage? Well, so the go up the ramp. Yes. And then I'm going to push off of the motorcycle mid-air doing a flip in the air but the idea is that the motorcycle should land on this thing all right so you're racing down this just fast enough to make this move work you're racing down this track as you're hitting the ramp come off the gas a little bit and you do like what you do like a backflip off of the seat of your motorcycle so like once it's in the air and i've basically like i've stopped throttling it yes. to let it drop i just kick straight up and then i'm propelling myself forward with my flips okay and it goes yeah. out from underneath you and you flip forward yes so we're saying okay yes. yeah you're gonna make a coordination test okay what'd you roll can i use my can i use anything uh, your motorcycle is fine. Okay. Uh, I rolled a six. My coordination is a seven plus two is 14. Massive success. You're going to hit this thing with the motorcycle. A motorcycle weighs. It's a, it's a level five weight. It's a level five weight. So we're going to do five damage. And because you did a, what was it, a massive success? Hey, what's up, everybody? <laughs> Whenever you do successes, there is a level, a scale of success. If you can beat my difficulty score by five or more, that's a massive success. That's the best kind of success you can get. It and that's is. what Gail just did. How much damage does my motorcycle do? It's, we're going to do the weight of the motorcycle, so it's going to be five. But <laughs> I'm going to roll strength for my robot okay. against the motorcycle to see if that stuns it and it doesn't okay it takes the hit it takes that damage that five damage you see it kind of steal itself into the the ground like these little uh hooks come out of its feet and latch onto like talons latch into the stage and hook it there and it turns and scans you new threat detected <laughs> Can I ask a real quick question, too? Um, no. Just to establish the scene. Yes. Is this a, a half stadium, like, or, or is it a two-sided stadium? Like, are there visitors on the other side? It's a half. Okay. So there's not a lot of people opposite the bleachers. It is just some. the other team, the other football team, and their coaches. Okay. Zach, what do you want to do? This guy is readying... Oh, wait, I have to take my monster's turn. I have to take my, my creature's turn. What was I doing? All right. This guy's going to shoot at Gracie, new de new threat detected. All right. That's uh, all right. Please roll your coordination to avoid my attack. I have a nine is my effort. I rolled a four plus my coordination of seven is 11. All so right. So that is two. a huge... That is a moderate failure, mm -hmm. which means it just fails, but it's going to shoot you again. And this time I've got a 10. Oh, I got an eight. An eight, which means that uh, 10 minus eight is two. That's a moderate success, which means I absolutely hit you with my damage, which is six. Six damage to your stamina. What is Labyrinth's stamina? Ten. Ten. So you're down to four already. Yeah. All right. Ah! Ugh, she says. Screw you. Zach, I'm sorry. What were you doing? Oh, well, I was just failing to fireman carry a stuntman. Uh, An so... action star. Yeah, you're Super right. Super celebrity, yeah. Super celebrity. So when looking at this robot, does it look like 
like just a pure robot or does it look like there's like someone inside it like kind of controlling it like no, a it's mech. too thin for that got it uh i am gonna like look like i'm diving in, into kind of the wreckage of the stage like for cover you know because this stage is kind of like blown up can i like kind of almost <laughs> uh i'll tell you what it's kind there. of open and it's got like a curtain at the bottom yeah you could just duck under that if you wanted to duck under curtain the stage so there's a cur- okay. there's like a little skirt yeah 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 on yeah, the stage I know what you're talking about. that's yeah, a better yeah. that's a better term there's a skirt hanging from the stage apron. yeah an apron if you will you could dive under the stage right here because I mean like he's like I'm gonna hit it with this firework display and you're getting cover right yeah that would work yeah yeah so I'm diving under there and. I'm fully aware that, like, if I just, like, transform into <laughs> Lazarus and then pop I out know, again. I know, man. Every, like, this is on camera. Like, I'm aware like, that this is on camera. Yeah. One and so, one is two. And in an effort to be uh, anonymous, I'm going to use some determination to turn into just, like, into liquid. To, like, this uh, kind of gooey, gooey fluid. All right. And I'm going to basically dive up underneath but then, like, I'm kind of moving underneath the curtain stage to try and, like, pop out where the the robot is. For those of you listening at home, Lazarus is, is made up of tiny little nano creatures, almost like ants, but, like, even smaller yeah. than that. Nano ants, almost. Yeah, they're, they're these alien creatures, these stretchy, gooey alien creatures that once made up polymorph. That allow him to control his shape usually resulting in him stretching. So uh, for him using a determination point, for those of you coming from like, say, D&D, this is like having advantage. Uh, We use determination points to do crazy cool maneuvers and stunts that maybe we wouldn't normally be able to do. And for Lazarus, in this case, he is using a determination point to turn into a, a puddle. Yeah. So that he can move across this grass under the stage and possibly pop up where the... Or get around the hole where this creature emerged. Yeah. Sounds cool. You're able to do that. Yeah. You turn into liquid. You're thinking on your feet. How the fuck do I do this without everybody going? Well, we saw Zach go <laughs> under the stage. And we saw Lazarus come out of the stage. As this is happening, Zach, you hear, Larry, let's do it. Light it up. And Gracie, you just got hit with this laser beam. It hurt. It totally ruined my my favorite jacket. It did fuck up your jacket. And then you turn around and you see this box explode as these fireworks emit forth and collide with the robot. Okay, distraction. They hit it with such force that it hits the ground. And skids across the ground to your feet. And you see its eyes go, Power down. And it shuts down. I want to check it out. Can I investigate to make sure it's done? Yeah, you start walking towards it. You hear Nick. And Lazarus, you hear this from above too. You hear Nick go, Cause you saw like under the stage lit up with these greens and reds and, and purples from the firework display just exploding. And you heard this, this massive explosion above you and you hear the sound of something dropping this giant, sorry, not giant, this seven foot tall near minivan sized robot <laughs> uh, collapsing on the stage, rumbling it above you. And you're Nick Northcutt say, careful, Gracie, be careful. And he starts walking up onto the stage and he grabs the microphone. Everyone calm down, everyone calm down. And he's kind of half talking into the microphone, half talking to Gracie. Mm-hmm. Is it neutralized? Is it? You look and it's not moving. It's light. It's completely lifeless. Can I tell, like, how much does it look like there's been enough damage here that would? 
There's some damage from your motorcycle, so you can see like dents and scratches, and there's some like tears at the shoulder where you really like collided your motorcycle mm-hmm. to it. And uh, but what about the fireworks? There's again some dents. There's a couple holes, mm-hmm. but it's a lot of singeing. Oh, maybe maybe something penetrated and hit the right spot. Who knows? Uh, Gracie, is it okay? <laughs> Yeah, I think I think we're okay. And Nick turns around. It's all right, everybody. You're safe. We are safe. We don't have to be afraid anymore. Lazarus, as you were under the stage, and you just turned into this liquid, you can see that there is a man under the stage, and he has a monitor and a remote control. His back's to you, but his face is illuminated by this monitor. He takes down his headset, and he says, Nailed it. Fucking nailed it. He hasn't seen me. He hasn't seen this puddle of liquid. No, no. I imagine, like, as soon as you get through, you transform, but he's got the headset on. There's a lot of explosions happening. He, he, He wasn't looking in your direction. Yeah. I am going to form up into the form of Zach again. Okay. I'm going to kind of like crawl up to this guy and be like, this, this was all an act. Oh, all shit. Some sort of- what the, who is this? What are you? Holy cow. Oh, man. There's an explosion. I'm trying to find cover. Was, hey, was this little all, buddy. Was this, all, was this all pretend? What? Was, was what? this all pretend? Was what pretend? The robot. You're, you're saying you nailed it. You have a remote control. What is this? I'm the, fireworks guy i'm larry (laughs) i'm he was yelling at me to i fired the fireworks i'm gonna i want to look at this monitor and i want to look at this control and i want to see if i can tell what it's meant to control you're looking and you can see that there's like four screens yeah one of them is completely black like it's one monitor with it that is split into four quadrants one is completely black the other ones are cameras set up around the stage, one facing the audience, one facing where Nick would have been standing if he was on stage giving a speech. And then another is kind of an above camera looking down that would have caught Gracie during her flip or her jump across the stage. No. But there is there is one that's blacked out. Okay, but there's nothing I can see that, that makes it seem like this is actually a fireworks control Basically, no, I'm, sus- no, I'm no, suspecting no. this guy might have been controlling this robot, and I want to see if there's any way I can prove that. There's nothing on the screen. He does have some kind of device in his hand. It looks like a remote control, but that could be what he was using to fire off the fireworks. I'm going to take it from him. What the fuck, kid? No, get, get back. What are you doing? What are you doing? I, I'm I'm going to take it, and I'm going to you know, to roll out from underneath the stage. All right, let's make a little, little coordination. Yeah. Your coordination versus mine, my regular schlub. Yeah. I don't know what your coordination is, but six. Oh, yeah. Pretty six. Good. It's pretty good. That's a two. That's an eight. All right. I got a five. So you got, you got kind of a major success, a major success. You're able to pull this and then you're able to, roll past him and you can pop up through the hole where the robot exploded out from. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, I'm gonna, really, I mean, really yeah. that's kind of the issue, isn't it? Is that this guy was right next to the robot. Yeah. You emerge with the remote control and you are behind Nick Northcutt as he is yelling to everybody. We never have to be afraid. We just have to stand up for ourselves. And Gracie, you see this kid, the cheerleader kid, standing up in the hole with a remote control. Kid? Nick Northcutt turns around, and his face is not looking at the audience. It's looking at you two. And you see him look at Zach, and you see his face drop. He puts his hand over the microphone. And for a brief moment, you see a man who is completely pathetic and weak but that only lasts for a moment. He grins and he says, come up here with me and take a bow. You're about to be a big star kid. 
I slowly approach the stage just kind of like in shock, but just like kind of this boiling rage for just kind of like piecing together what has happened here. And he holds out his hand for the remote control. And I try and grab the microphone from him. All right. Let's see if you can get past Nick Northcutt. He's yeah. a little bit more athletic bit more. than bit more. the guy downstairs. But he's still <laughs> a human. Or is he? So I <laughs> I rolled a three, which with my coordination is a nine. I rolled a 12. What? He's that coordinated? Man. <laughs> he grabs the microphone. And he, with one hand and with the other hand, he puts it on your shoulder. And he's doing it in a way that is very forceful to you and stops you. And then, but it, it looks like he's holding you by the collar, like he's about to give you a, a pat on the back. And he says, don't let this moment pass you up or you're not going to get another one. There are people who kill for something like this. I just, I, I'm shaking the remote control. I was like, what was this? This, was this just all something for your movie? Do I hear any of this? Yeah, you're watching. I all hear of all it. of it. Okay, yeah. I want to make sure. I definitely want to start climbing up on the stage then. Yeah. He says, it's not for the movie. It's for you. It's for everybody. It's for Solus Bay. It's for the United States of America. People need to see that human beings, regular human beings like me and you, can be heroes. Don't mess this up for the world. And he wraps his arm around you and pulls you in close. Take a bow with me. I faint. <laughs> what? I'm bloodied and hurt. And as I get up there and I see him take the fist hug, and as I like approach them, I just fall over. Shit. You, <laughs> Nick Northcutt is like, I have to go deal with the lady <sighs> now, but I'm still in the middle of dealing with this fucking kid. <laughs> Zach, what do you want to do? I see her fate too, I assume. <laughs> yeah, she... both guys like turn I want to assume left. it's like one of those loud thunks on like those, yeah. ma- you know, quickly made stages that you are still really have your hollow. motorcycle <laughs> helmet on. And so it goes, gung, gung, gung. (laughs) Bounces off the ground. Uh, I'm going to, like, kind of go over to uh, Gracie and kind of put, like, did you fall, like, on your back or on your face or on your side? Where are you? Uh, Side. Side? Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to kind of put, like, my arm, like, underneath your side. I'm going to sit her up and just, like, see if she's okay. You You set her up. You take off her helmet. She probably is lacking some oxygen right now. Like she needs. Yeah. She needs her head free. And you see the beautiful Gracie Hartwell. Are you okay? It shot me. (laughs) My bike. (laughs) You guys hear the voice of Nick Northcutt over the, the intercom, the, the stadium speakers saying, we need some medical personnel up there for Gracie Hartwell, who risked her life for me. None of this would be possible. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get this cleaned up. We're still going to play this football game. And he puts the, the microphone in the stand, and he comes over to the, the two of you, and he puts his hand on that remote control. I don't let go. Don't do this. What is this? You already did this, Nick. What is this? Why don't we all get a chance to talk about this? When we're not in front of thousands of people, I can explain everything. I can explain everything. I'm going to walk away. And if the mic's at the stand now, I'm just going to grab that mic. Nick looks at you, tears welling up in his eyes. And he just says, don't, please don't. Nick, what is this? I turn on, I make sure the mic's on. I kind of like tap it once or twice. And I say, no, Nick, what? I have to say to you, I want everyone to hear. One year ago today, a hero died. And not just any hero, maybe the greatest hero that Solus Bay has ever seen. 
And today should be about honoring him and, and all the people he saved throughout his entire life. And instead, you come here and you, you, you fake. You, you put on a charade of making it seem like you're a hero. Like you are, are as good a, as he was. And it is the most blatantly disrespectful sham I have ever seen. There are people that, here that were there that night that are traumatized by what they saw and what happened here. And here you are trying to, trying to play an action hero. You're a disgrace. And I drop the microphone and I punch him. Oh, wow. You drop the microphone. You take two steps towards him, your fist balled up. And after having his world crumble in front of him, Nick Northcutt, before you get to him, turns around and runs as fast as he can. And the whole stadium is in complete shock and silence as this one man is running the entire length of the football field. <laughs> Sorry, what a visual. He gets to a fence. He jumps over that fence. <laughs> is now in the parking lot. And you see him disappear in between cars. The whole time he's running, you just hear him yelling. <laughs> no. Where's the remote? It's in this kid's hand. And that kid came up from the hole. I saw that. Uh, yeah, you did. I'm going to roll over and I want to roll just into the hole. You go over the hole and you see Larry, who's packing up his shit into a duffel bag. And he looks eyes with you. And I'm just staring at him. That was crazy, right? Nick ran away. That was nuts. Do I know Larry? Have I ever met Larry? Yeah. Larry works on the movie. What the hell, Larry? Look, I can see that the jig is up. Fuck Nick what Northcutt, jig? right? Yeah. It Are was his idea. It was his I... idea. He said it was just going to be a show. I thought we were doing a show. I thought people would know that it was a show. You shot me. It wouldn't have killed you. It just hurts a little. You ruined my jacket, my bike. And Nick will pay for that. He's going to pay for all this. Let's go get him. Um. Okay. You're coming with me. I yep. grab onto him. Gladly. It was his fault. You come out from under the stage with this guy, and there is a sea of reporters coming up who are here to cover Nick Northcutt, who are coming up to talk to Zach Lapidus. And there is a lady who walks up to Zach, and she says, we're just here right now, breaking news. Nick Northcutt is about to give a speech, and according to this young man, he put on a life-threatening show that almost killed Gracie Hartwell. Apparently, it was all a charade, a hoax. In order to promote his new movie, No More Miracles, coming out next summer. This was discovered by... What's your name, son? And all these cameras are on you in this one microphone. Channel 8. Today was like already an emotional day already for, for Zach. And like this just like... He's, he's like kind of crying like angry tears now. He's just so mad that that someone would try and do this on, on this day of all days. And he just like is kind of shocked by this, like this person just talking to his face and he just, he just, he just starts running away. He starts running to the locker room. You start like pushing your way through these people and they're like tangling with you. Like, Hey, wait, 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 wait. what's going on? What's the real story? Why Why did Nick Northcutt run from a 16-year-old cheerleader captain? Somewhere you can hear Stacey Larson going, Co-captain, motherfucker! Language! <laughs> Miss Calloway. <laughs> Language. You, you're tussling through there, and you hear a voice that you have heard your entire life. Get your hands off of my son. And this woman parts the crowd. She grabs a hold of you close. And starts walking you through this sea of people who are all trying to see what's going on with this 16-year-old kid. And she whispers down to you, I don't know what the hell is going on. 
but we're getting the fuck out of here. Okay, kid? Yeah, I hold her r- real tight, and that but like that's what I needed right in that moment is just someone on my side, and I just kind of hold on to her and just walk with her. She starts walking you down the field, and as you all are moving, these people are surrounding you, but you're able to catch in between these figures. Miss Calloway, Coach Calloway, she's looking at you, sadness on her face because she has a very good idea what today meant to you. You're led out by your mother. You get into a tan minivan that is about the size of a minivan. (laughs) A measuring stick of all objects in out of depth place. <laughs> no, I, I can picture that minivan vividly now. It's clear. Yeah. 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 The sliding mechanism on the door doesn't work, but the rail is real sticky. So you gotta like really pull it to get it shut. All these people are banging up against the glass of your window. What's happening? What happens to Nick? Who are you? And they're just, <laughs> please answer me anything. Your mom revs up the engine to the minivan. Like, I'm about to plow every single one of these people. And she starts pulling out. People are, she's like, I'm, I feel like I'm about to hurt these people, Zach. And she kind of regrets it. She's like, why do people act like this? Why do people act like this? Like fools. You got better sense than that, son. I don't even know why you ran up there. I'm so mad at you right now for running up there. What were you thinking? I thought someone was in danger. I was just trying to do the right thing, Ma. But that guy, like... Polymorph was my hero, and, like, he just took everything that he was and just made it about him. I know. He's the he's the furthest thing from a hero, and I, I, I just couldn't not say anything. That's not who he raised me to be. I hope one day, when you have kids, you know what it's like to be so angry because you're afraid your child was hurt, but simultaneously so proud that they're a good human being. I also hope that that day is a really long time away because I'm not ready to be a grandmother yet. <laughs> yeah, mom. It's it's a long ways away. Don't you worry. Let's go get some tacos. That'd be great. As Zach and his mother drive out of this parking lot, Gracie, you're handing over this Larry to the authorities and they're, they have a lot of questions. They want to know. What exactly just happened and why did action movie star Nick Northcutt run away from a 16-year-old boy? You tell them as much as you know. Larry is also rolling over on his boss as much as he can Mm -hmm. to save his own ass. I'm I'm also looking for any of the cheer squad that I know. Stacy, Jasmine, Miss Calloway. You see the girls and a couple of young men. Who make up the cheer squad. You don't see Zach among them. You know that he got carried out of here by his mother. And she looked like a lady who was not to be trifled with. You see Miss Calloway. Come here. Is Zach okay? Was he okay when you... Did he get hurt? No, he wasn't hurt. Not as far as I saw. All of a sudden, I'm trying to get in character. So, the police are going to need his statement. So they'll need his name. I only know his first name, Zach. I'm sure he doesn't want to be bothered tonight, but at some point he should probably tell them what's going on, which I believe is that Nick Northcutt um, made all this up and that Zach caught him. Or at least that's what I picked up. Yeah, I'll I'll cooperate with whoever I need to, to speak to. Thank you so much. You weren't, I'm sorry, I guess you weren't in on it, were you? No, I wouldn't have wrecked my favorite bike. If I thought it was anyway. Anyway, um what was his name again? Zach Lapidus. Lapidus. Okay. He's a good kid. Yeah, I can tell. Definitely. He did he did the right thing. You should be very proud of him. Gracie gets her bike. It's a little messed up on the front end. Mm-hmm. But you're able to ride it slowly through the city back to your apartment zach you're sitting at a restaurant eating tacos with your mom and somewhere there's a young man named jackson jones sitting in the bowels of the gymnasium locker room at malconi and i his fist hammering the walls of a bathroom stall in pain with each punch 
you see a little bit more of his flesh give way, revealing some type of insect creature that he is now becoming. <laughs>